Hello everyone, today I've got a really cool video for you. We're gonna talk about higher dimensional spheres. Uh, bear with me for a moment, I'm gonna explain everything. And stick around to the end of the video, I promise you're gonna like it. But if you already know how to think of higher dimensions and higher dimensional spheres, how we got the uh, formulas for the area of a circle and the volume of a sphere, you can skip ahead. Higher dimensional spheres is such a rich and mind-blowing topic that I had no idea where to start at first. But I settled on starting by explaining what are higher dimensions. You know how in Interstellar, inside the black hole, when they represented time as a spatial dimension, being the fourth spatial dimension, they did this by stacking together infinite copies of three-dimensional space. Sort of like how stacking layers layers of brick gets you from one dimension to the second, and how stacking paper on top of each other gets you from the second dimension to the third. Now, of course, here we're speaking about Euclidean space. Non-Euclidean spaces are a rich and uh, weird fascinating topic of their own that really deserve a video. Well, if we're gonna uh, talk about how we got the uh, formula for the area of a circle, we need to chop up the circle into little pieces. You may chop it up into triangles, or rings, or rectangles. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna chop it up into little rectangles. We got our number line, and our circle. Well, the area of the circle is the sum of the areas of the individual little triangles. Each have a uh, width delta x. Well, since the radius is r, we can see by the Pythagorean theorem that the length of each uh, rectangle is 2 times the square root of r squared minus x squared. So the area of the circle is the sum uh, of the areas of all the little rectangles, being the sum from i equals 1 up to n of 2 times the square root of r squared minus x squared d delta x. And this uh, approximation gets better and better as delta x gets smaller and smaller, becoming the infinitesimal distance dx. So we can replace this sum by the integral from a to b to of two r squared, uh, of two square roots of r squared minus x squared dx. A and b being negative r and positive r, because we can see uh, from the Riemann integral that the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of f of x i delta x is the same thing as the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Well, uh, that boils down to pi r squared. You can check it out, uh, you can uh, check if this is correct yourself. Now, we do the same thing for three-dimensional spheres. We chop a three-dimensional sphere into uh, little disks, each with a width delta x, and a radius square root of r squared minus x squared and then the volume of a sphere is the sum of pi times the radius of each um, of each disk times uh, the radius of each disk squared times uh, the width delta x and this approximation gets better and better as delta x goes to dx so we can replace this by the integral from negative r up to r of pi times r squared minus x squared dx and you can check out for yourself that this is indeed equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Well, uh, a point is a zero dimensional sphere. A line is a one dimensional sphere. A circle is a two dimensional sphere and the sphere is itself a three dimensional sphere. Well, what comes next? How do we think about four dimensional spheres? How do they look like? Well, they maybe look like this. Well, what is it? Well, if we have a, the fourth dimension represented by a number line, uh, just like the uh, th three-dimensional sphere was just a collection of two-dimensional spheres with varying lengths on top of each other, and just like the two-dimensional sphere, which is a circle, is just a collection of lines on top of each other, the fourth dimensional sphere is a collection of three dimensional sphere on top of each other. And what you're seeing on the top is sort of like the projection of this four dimensional sphere uh, on the three dimensional space. So, 
we're gonna do the same with the hypersphere as we did with uh, our three-dimensional sphere and the circle. The formula for the uh, volume of hyperdimensional sphere is what we get by integrating from negative r to r the volumes of three-dimensional spheres times the little increment delta x in the fourth dimension. And we know that we can replace this sum by uh, the integral. We can take out an r to the fourth out of the, out of the integral, and then what's left is the, uh, the int this integral represents the, uh, the constant uh, hypervolume of the unit hypersphere. We, we were able to do the same with the three-dimensional sphere and the four-dimensional sphere and the two-dimensional sphere because we know that the hypervolume of an n-dimensional sphere varies as r to the n and uh, it is multiplied by a constant multiple of uh, which represents the um, hypervolume or the volume of an of the n-dimensional unit sphere. Well, we start to solve the integral. We can take out the 4 thirds pi out of the integral, and since uh, our function is an even function, we can replace the integral from negative 1 to 1 with 2 times the integral from 0 to 1. And we substitute x for sine of u, then dx is cosine of u du. That means that uh, our formula for the uh, hypervolume of a 4 dimensional hypersphere is 8 thirds pi r to the 4th times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine to the 4th of u du. And we have a trigonometric identity that says cosine of u all squared is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2u all over 2. We're going to use this trigonometric identity twice to fully replace the cosine to the 4th by uh, just cosines. And you can check out that this is equal to 8 thirds pi r to the 4th times 3 over 16 pi, giving us that the formula for the hypervolume of a 4-dimensional hypersphere is pi squared over 2 r to the 4th. Well, in general, we can say that the volume of an n-dimensional hypersphere of radius r, which is what, what, which is, what is represented by the left-hand side of the equation, is equal to the integral from negative r up to r, of the volume or the hypervolume of a, of spheres of one less dimension evaluated at all the possible uh, radiuses square root of r squared minus x squared dx that's just what we did with a circle a sphere and uh, the hypersphere of uh, dimension 4 this is the general formula for it and we can take out always take out an r to the n out of the integral to multiply the rest of the and multiply that r to the n by the integral of the unit sphere, the hypervolume of the unit sphere in that dimension. That is our general formula. And now, what if we want not the hypervolume by the, but the hypersurface of some sphere? Well, we're gonna uh, simplify things by just taking the two-dimensional sphere, which is circle, and we're gonna increase the sizes of the circle by increase the radius of a circle by little increment delta x and we're going to see that this rectangle is the uh, increased area of the circle it has uh, width delta x and height which is the surface uh, we want to calculate we can note that the area which is the d of the hyperdimensional volume with the difference in the hyperdimensional volume is equal to the surface times the increment in x or the increment on the radius otherwise said so you can see that the uh, hyper uh, surface of some n dimensional hypersphere is equal to the derivative with respect to the radius of the hypervolume of a sphere with that radius you can check out yourself that uh, the derivative of pi r squared is 2 pi r, which is consistent uh, with the real formulas for uh, the, uh, the perimeter of a circle and uh, its area. The derivative of 4 thirds pi r cubed, which is the volume of a sphere, is equal to 4 pi r squared, which is the surface area of a sphere. And so, the derivative of pi, r, of pi squared over 2 r to the fourth is 2 pi squared r cubed. And that is the hypersurface area of our four-dimensional hypersphere. 
and you can use these formulas to get to any number of dimensions you want, not necessarily just four dimensions. You can use our general formula for the hyper dimension, uh, for the hyper volume of a hyper dimensional sphere, uh, to get to the volume of any hyper dimensional sphere, and then you can differentiate it with respect to the radius to get the formula for the hypersurface of that sphere. Now that's really cool. Um, this is truly really beautiful stuff. I'll definitely do more videos like this one in the future. Maybe I'll talk about topology and hyperbolic geometry more. If you're still watching, thank you, you're amazing. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and share the video. Definitely more people need to hear about this. And until next time, go prismatize the world.